What's up everybody, Jay here from Tap and Turn Gaming, coming at you today with another Commander slash EDH deck tech. So, uh, last week we, uh, we posted a poll on the channel, uh, to kind of see what the next deck tech you guys would like to, uh, see from us. You know, we had a, uh, handful of decks that were, uh, ready to be teched and, uh, made videos on. So we uh, we posted that poll last week, and uh, just uh, tallied up the uh, the votes recently. And uh, Yuriko the Tiger Shadow, as you can tell by the uh, the image that you're staring at right now on the screen, uh, that card won the poll. So uh, we had four options on the poll. We had Hapatra Vizier of Poisons. Uh, we had Kumina Tyrant of Araska. Verena Lich Queen and obviously Yuriko and uh, Yuriko ended up winning the poll. I was pretty close for a little while between Verena and Yuriko but uh, Yuriko kind of just uh, held the lead and kind of just ran with it. Um, so yeah that's uh, what we're bringing you here today. Uh, thank you to all who uh, voted in that poll to uh, let us know what you want to see next. But yeah, that's uh, what we're going to be doing here today. We're going to be taking a look at uh, Derek's build. Uh, this is actually Derek's deck. Uh, he came up with this list and uh, currently does have it complete in paper. And uh, from what I've been told, uh, it operates pretty well. Uh, a lot of lists that I've seen for Yuriko kind of uh, go with the overall idea of uh, lots of top deck manipulation and then, uh, you know putting like high converted mana cost stuff on the top of your deck to max really maximize uh, her ability um, which we're gonna take a look at here in a second when we take a look closer look at the card but uh, you know Derek decided to go with a more uh, fun and a more relaxed kind of build uh, for this list so it essentially is ninja tribal um, but there is a pretty uh, heavy element of control uh, built into it as well. Uh, to, you know, maintain that uh, that board control and keep your ninjas out and uh, just maximize the value that they generate from you from hitting your opponent. But with that out of the way, let's take a look at Yuriko and see what exactly what she does. Uh, so she is a legendary creature human ninja, so uh, that's pretty cool, right? Ninjas are always nice. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, kind of an ode to uh, Kamigawa block. And uh, honestly, real talk, uh, Kamigawa is, you know, kind of holds a soft place in my heart. Uh, it really does. I did enjoy Kamigawa. Uh, I know a lot of people hated it. A lot of people probably didn't really care for it. Uh, but I kind of, uh, or I'm a little biased uh, when it comes to Kamigawa because uh, when I first started playing Magic uh, back in 2004, uh, Kamigawa was, uh, you know, the current set, so uh, a lot of my initial, like, impulsive Magic the Gathering purchases of, like, booster packs and stuff like that, uh, was Kamigawa stuff, so, uh, you know, it kind of holds a soft place in my heart, uh, and I, I really enjoyed the set, I mean, and, uh, ninjas are obviously one of the, uh, you know, the premier... Uh, tribes from that set, you know, ninjas and samurai were kind of the two prevalent, uh, you know, tribes, also spirits, spirits are also very prevalent in that set, but uh, ninjas are probably one of the more cooler tribes, I would say, uh, but there aren't that many ninjas actually printed, uh, which you'll see, we have a pretty low creature count in this deck, but uh, anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's, uh, Let's take a look at Yuriko. So she's a 1-3 via um, 1, a blue, and a black. Uh, she has Commander Ninjutsu. So uh, basically Ninjutsu by itself allows you to return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand and then put whatever card that's in your hand that has Ninjutsu into play tapped and attacking for its Ninjutsu cost. So it essentially replaces... Uh, the creature that went unblocked with itself. But uh, Yuriko has Commander Ninjutsu. So for a blue and a black, you can return an unblocked attacker you control to hand to put this card onto the battlefield from your hand 
or the command zone tapped and attacking. Uh, why this is really nice is because that will allow you to dodge commander attacks. Uh, I believe. I believe it lets you dodge it. Um, I don't think that you need to pay commander tax uh, if you're commander ninjutsuing this in because uh, you're technically not casting it. You're just uh, putting it into play, tapped and attacking. Uh, either from your hand or the command zone, so I'm almost positive that it dodges commander tax, uh, because who likes paying commander tax? I mean, seriously. <laughs> so uh, that's a pretty potent ability, but uh, what the real big draw on Yuriko is, uh, is that whenever a ninja you control deals combat damage to a player, you reveal the top card of your library, and put that card into your hand. Each opponent loses life equal to that card's converted mana cost. Uh, each opponent. So if you're playing a big multiplayer game, uh, you know, if you reveal a six cost card off the top of your library with that ability, each of your opponents is going to lose six life. So pretty, uh, pretty powerful effect, I would say. Um, although the overall mana curve of this deck is relatively low, so you're not going to, uh, you know, get huge swingy life drain triggers or anything like that, but uh, it does also put that card into your hand. So more importantly, uh, it's going to generate you some pretty savage card advantage, especially if you're hitting with multiple ninjas in a single turn. So, uh, that I mean, that's more or less Yuriko in a nutshell and uh, everything that she does. So uh, let's uh, jump on into the rest of the deck. Again, this is uh, Ninja Tribal, so uh, basically all of the creatures in the deck are going to be ninjas. Uh, there are a few that are not ninjas, but for all intents and purposes, they might as well be. Um, so let's, uh, let's start it off here. First up is Metallic Mimic. Uh, a 2-1 two, for 2. It's an artifact creature shapeshifter. So right off the bat, Technically not a ninja, but when it uh, enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type. Uh, so it is the chosen type in addition to its other type. So obviously we're going to pick ninja. So this will be an artifact creature ninja shapeshifter. But why we really like it is uh, each other creature you control of the chosen type enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. So it makes all of our ninjas come into play a little bit bigger and hit a little bit harder. Next we have Skull Snatcher, a 2-1 for 2 via 1 and a black. And this can ninjutsu for 1 black. But when Skull Snatcher hits a player, you can exile up to 2 cards from that player's graveyard. So, uh, you know, being able to get a little graveyard hate in there is definitely not a bad thing. Especially if you're playing against somebody that's uh, liking to play with their graveyard. Next we have Adaptive Automaton. Again, not a ninja, but it might as well be. It's a 2-2 for 3. When it comes in, we choose a creature type. Ninjas, obviously. Uh, it is that type in addition to its other types. And uh, But instead of uh, putting plus 1, plus 1 counters on our things like the Mimic does, uh, this is just a static Anthem effect. Uh, so other creatures we control of the chosen type get plus 1, plus 1. Then we have Miss Blade Shinobi, an actual ninja. Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 3 via 2 and a blue with ninjutsu for 1 blue. And when it hits a player, you can return target creature that player controls to their hand. So uh, a little bit of disruption there if this hits your opponent. Then we have Walker of Secret Ways, a 1-2 for 3 with ninjutsu for 1 and a blue. And whenever this uh, deals combat damage to a player, you can look at that player's hand you know, not a terribly potent ability, but being able to peek at your opponent's hand to kind of get a grasp of what they're up to uh, in the next, you know, coming turns is uh, definitely nothing to scoff at. But uh, then we can also pay one and a blue to return target ninja you control to its owner's hand. We can play this only during our turn, but uh, that's okay because... Uh, you know, all the ninjutsu is going to occur on our turn when we're attacking. Uh, so we can use this to, uh, you know, bounce a ninja to our hand uh, to ninjutsu it in again later if we want to. 
Then we have Clever Impersonator, not a ninja. It's uh it's a clone, but we can, you know, have it come in as a copy of a ninja, so it's kind of a ninja, right? <laughs> But uh, when this uh, enters the battlefield, you can have it come in as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. So uh, a very much more powerful clone. Uh, your traditional clone would just, you know, clone any creature on the board. Uh, this will become a copy of any non-land permanent. So that's artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, creatures, whatever you want it to be, as long as it's not a land. Then we have Ninja of the Deep Hours, a 2-2 for 4 via 3 and a blue. It can ninjutsu for 1 and a blue. And when it hits a player, you draw a card. Pretty simple. Then we have Phyrexian Metamorph, another clone. Uh, it costs 3 and a Phyrexian blue, so we can pay that with either 1 blue mana or 2 life. And then uh, we can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any artifact or creature on the battlefield, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Then we have Sakashima's Student, another clone that actually is a ninja. Uh, it is a human ninja, and it costs two and two blue. It can ninjutsu in for one and a blue. And we can have it enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature, except it's a ninja in addition to its other types. So uh, it retains its, uh, its ninja-ness. <laughs> Next we have uh, Higir, the Still Wind, uh, which is probably one of the more potent ninjas in the deck, uh, next to Yuriko herself. Uh, Higir is a 3-4 for 5 via 3 and 2 blue. He can ninjutsu for 2 and 2 blue. And then when he hits a player, you can tutor up a ninja card, reveal it, and put it in your hand. And then if you do, shuffle your library. And then you can also pay two generic. Target Ninja is unblockable this turn. So very, very important card for the deck, uh, at least in the creature base. Uh, getting this out basically guarantees that you're going to uh, hit with uh, whatever ninjas you attack with if you've got that mana to sink into that ability. And then you can also start just ripping ninjas out of your deck and putting them into your hand uh, with that tutor effect. So very nice. Then we have Okiba Gang Shinobi, a 3-2 for 5 via 3 and 2 black, with Ninjutsu for 3 and 1 black. And then when it hits a player, that player discards 2 cards, so a little bit of hand hate there. Then we have Throat Slitter, a 2-2 for 5 with Ninjutsu for 2 and a black. When it hits a player, we can destroy target non-black creature that player controls, so uh, some uh, creature destruction there when it hits. Then we have uh, Ink Eyes, Servant of Oni, a 5-4 for 6 via 4 and 2 black. Can ninjutsu for 3 and 2 black. And when it hits a player, we can put target creature card from that player's graveyard into play under our control. So we can start stealing our opponent's creatures out of their graveyard and using them against them. Also, this can regenerate for uh, one and a black, so uh, it makes it so that it's uh, pretty difficult to remove. So that's always nice as well. And then lastly for our creatures, we have Silent Blade Oni, a 6-5 for 7 via 3, 2 blue and 2 black. It's a demon ninja, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty interesting combination of uh, creature types there. Uh, it can ninjutsu for four, a blue and a black. And then when it hits a player, we can look at that player's hand and we can cast a non-land card in it without paying that card's mana cost. So uh, we start hitting with this. We can start using our opponent's uh, cards in hand against them. So, uh, you know, we have something that can rip stuff out of their graveyard and use it against them. And then we have this that can rip stuff out of their hand and use it against them. So pretty nice stuff. So that, uh, that wraps up our uh, creature base. Pretty low creature count. There's only 14 creatures in total in this deck, which may seem a little low. But, uh, you know, with the amount of uh, emphasis of control in this deck, which you'll see uh, a little bit later on in, like, the Instance and Sorceries package, uh, you'll see there's a pretty heavy emphasis on control. So I feel like with that amount of control, we can get away with a little bit of a lower creature count. But uh, next up, we're going to take a look at the artifacts that we run in the deck. 
Um, more or less, we have, uh, you know, a bunch of mana rocks, obviously. And then uh, we have a couple of utility things, like uh, stuff that lets us, uh, you know, manipulate the top of our deck or, uh, you know, other things. So uh, let's just jump into the artifacts. Uh, we'll just take a look at the suite of mana rocks that we run first. So uh, we run Soul Ring, obviously. I mean, why wouldn't we, right? Uh, it's Soul Ring and it's Commander, so uh, why wouldn't we be running it? <laughs> uh, and then we run all of the Demir uh, mana rocks. So we run Demir Signet, Demir Key Rune, and Demir Clue Stone. Also Demir Locket, which is uh, a new one from Guilds of Ravnica. Very similar to the Clue Stone, except it uh, you know, can sacrifice away for a little bit extra investment, but you get an extra card out of it. Uh, and then we also have uh, Commander's Fear and Dark Steel Ingot. Uh, those will tap for any color. Uh, the Commander Sphere can uh, freely sacrifice a way to draw a card. And then the Dark Steel Ingot uh, is indestructible. So, you know, our opponent, uh, you know, if they really want to remove our Dark Steel Ingot, the only thing that they can do is uh, exile it somehow. So, those are our mana rocks. Uh, as far as the rest of our artifacts, we run an Aether Vial. Uh, this basically lets us kind of, uh, you know, re-put ninjas back onto the board uh, from our hand by tapping this. Uh, so at the beginning of our upkeep, we can put a charge counter on this. Then we can tap it to put a creature card with convert a mana cost equal to the number of charge counters on it from our hand onto the battlefield. Um, you know, so if we get this up to three charge counters and we have a three cost ninja in our hand, we can just simply tap this to put it onto the board, uh, which can work pretty good when we're ninjutsuing stuff in and out of play. Then we have a Sensei's Divining Top, uh, top tier, top deck manipulation right here. Uh, so it costs one, we can pay one. Uh, to look at the top three cards of our library and then put them back in any order. So obviously a very good thing to have with Yuriko uh, so that we can make sure that we get the highest converted mana cost card among the three cards that we see uh, on the top of our deck so that we can maximize Yuriko's ability. Uh, but then we can also tap this to draw our card and then put Sensei's Divining Top on top of its owner's library. So if you really want to have... Uh, one of the cards uh, that you see amongst the three that you peek at, uh, you can grab it by tapping this. Uh, it does kind of set you back a turn uh, because this goes on top of your library, but uh, you know this is a uh, like a twenty-something dollar card for a reason. It's very good. <laughs> and then uh, lastly, we have uh, Bident of Thassa and Vanquisher's Banner. So the uh, Bident of Thassa uh, costs four via two and two blue. Whenever a creature we control hits a player, we can draw our card. So uh, a little bit of card draw there is pretty nice. And then we can uh, pay one to blue and tap this to make it so that creatures our opponents control attack this turn of Fable. So if somebody's uh, sitting on some sort of creature that's uh, not doing anything other than just sitting there granting them some sort of, you know, uh, nice effect. Uh, you know, you can use this to force them to have to attack with that and hopefully kill it in combat so it can't just sit there and do good things for them. And then uh, Vanquisher's Banner, another uh, very nice card to have in any tribal deck. Uh, costs five. When it comes in, we choose a creature type. Obviously going to be ninjas here. Uh, gives all of our ninjas uh, plus one, plus one. So a nice little anthem effect. And whenever we cast a creature spell of the chosen type, or if we cast any of our ninjas, in this instance, we draw a card. So not only does it uh, give us a nice anthem effect, it uh, gives us some extra card draw as well. So that is the artifact package. Uh, next up, we're going to take a look at our spells, the uh, instants and sorceries. But uh, first, we're going to take a look at the sorceries. And uh, I'm going to try to group these together and uh, kind of certain uh, aspects of what they do. So uh, a lot of our sorceries are either things that will uh, allow us to manipulate the top of our deck slash draw cards. 
Uh, we also have some things in here that will grant uh, creatures the ability to not be blocked. Uh, so obviously we want that. Uh, we want our ninjas to hit so we can uh, trigger that ability on our commander. And then uh, we have some removal as well. So uh, let's take a look at the stuff that we have uh, that allows us to go unblocked. So we have Artful Dodge, uh, Distortion Strike, and Tigum Strike. So more or less these all will uh, make something unblockable. So Artful Dodge, uh, one blue target creature is unblockable this turn and it has flashback for one blue so we get two uses out of it. Uh, and then Distortion Strike, uh, one blue gives a creature a plus one plus zero oh and can't be blocked and it has rebound so we get two uses out of that as well. And then Tigum Strike is basically just a more expensive Distortion Strike except uh, the creature gets plus two plus zero oh and can't be blocked also with rebound. So those are the, uh, the three spells that we have in the sorceries that let us go unblocked. Uh, next we'll uh, look at the stuff that we have that allows us to kind of manipulate the top of our deck and or draw cards. Uh, so we have Ponder, Preordain, Serum Visions, Discovery Dispersal, and Notion Rain. Um, so more or less all of these kind of let us... Uh, you know, manipulate the top of our deck or draw cards. So, you know, ponder, we can look at our top three, put them back in any order, and then we may shuffle our library, and then we can draw our card. Uh, Preordain lets us scry two and then draw our card. Serum Visions lets us draw our card and scry two. So, you know, obviously we want to have those types of effects so that we can maximize uh, the life drain, obviously, off of revealing cards off the top of our deck when we activate, uh, or I'm sorry, when we trigger, I should say, uh, Yuriko's uh, ability there. I'm not going to go over, you know, each one of these cards individually, what they do. Uh, they kind of more or less all serve the same purpose. So, uh, you know, the images will be up here on the screen so you can see what they do. But, you know, I'm going to try to keep them grouped together, uh, you know, for the purpose that they serve. And then uh, as far as uh, our removal, you know, we have a uh, Never to Return and a Ruinous Path. Uh, you know, some just nice spot removal for us. And then uh, we also do have a uh, Connive Concoct, um, which is another split card from Return to, uh, sorry, not Return to Ravnica, Guilds of Ravnica. I'm sorry, the Return to the Return to Ravnica, as a lot of people like to call it. Anyways, getting back to the card, uh, Connive, uh, we can uh, use that side to gain control of a target creature with power two or less. Or Concoct, we can Surveil 3 and then return a creature card from our graveyard to the battlefield. So uh, that side of it does give us a little bit of uh, top deck manipulation and then also can resurrect something out of our graveyard. So that is our Sorcery Package. Uh, next up we're going to take a look at the Instance, which is... Uh, 23 cards uh, so we have lots and lots of instants in this deck nearly a fourth of this deck is instants uh, but you'll see a lot of this is uh, you know removal or counter magic or uh, stuff that um, you know we do have a uh, quite a few flicker effects in this deck as well uh, that we can use you know as answers towards somebody else's removal uh, to protect our ninjas and things of that nature. We also have a little bit of uh, more top deck manipulation and card draw here. Uh, but we're going to try to uh, keep it all grouped together. So uh, first up we'll take a look at the, uh, at the removal pieces. So we have a Cyclonic Rift. Obviously if you're playing blue, uh, you're more than likely playing Cyclonic Rift because it's arguably probably the best card in blue for commander uh, and then we have a doom blade a go for the throat uh, reality shift capsize and uh, hero's downfall murder and i think that's it i think that's it for the actual like straight up removal um 
So obviously, you know, again, with the uh, focus on the control uh, element of it, we want to have lots of ways to uh, remove our opponent's stuff off of the board so that our ninjas can just do their thing. Uh, next, we'll take a look at our counter magic. So uh, ideally, we want to uh, be using this uh, more often uh, than our actual removal. We want to have the counter magic to be able to just say nope to what our opponent's doing so it doesn't even touch the board to begin with. Uh, so as far as our uh, counter magic goes, we have a cancel, we have dissipate and dissolve, fairy trickery, uh, scatter to the winds, sinister sabotage, and void shatter. So that's all of our counter magic. Um, you know, some of it uh, like Void Shatter and, uh, you know, I think uh, Dissipate. Uh, those will, uh, also Fairy Trickery, those will exile the spells when they get countered. So that's always nice to be able to, you know, say nope to a particular card forever. And then more or less the, uh, the rest of it is just, uh, you know, just straight up counter target spell like Cancel or... Uh, or Sinister Sabotage will do that, but then we can Surveil 1 also. So, um, you know, some of our counter magic kind of does a little bit extra for us, like Sinister Sabotage, but it all serves the same purpose. It just lets us uh, keep the board clear so that we can uh, let our ninjas do their thing. Uh, and then uh, as far as our uh, flicker effects... Uh, we have Essence Flux, uh, we also have Siren's Ruse, Displace, Ghostly Flicker, and uh, Release to the Wind. Uh, Release to the Wind is actually a very solid card, which I don't see played very, very often. I think it's a pretty underrated card. Uh, it basically is kind of like a delayed flicker. Uh, so for two and a blue, you can exile a non-land permanent. And for as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. Uh, so this can be your stuff. It can be your opponent's stuff. Um, ideally, you'll probably be using it on your own stuff. Uh, and the fact that it's like delayed and you can you know cast it uh, without paying its cost whenever you want. Uh, you know, means that you can, like, use it on one of your creatures to, like, dodge a board wipe, essentially. Uh, you know, you cast this, exile that, uh, exile that creature, your opponent's board wipe resolves, and then after that, uh, you can, you know, cast your creature that you exiled with it. So, uh, it being kind of a delayed flicker is, uh, is pretty nice. But, uh, the rest of the stuff is just, uh, you know, instant speed flicker exile something and then bring it immediately back um so you know we we just have that in there is uh ways to protect our ninjas and things of that nature from like opposing removal and uh, stuff like that and then uh a couple of other things we have we have a brainstorm you know another way for us to uh you know manipulate the top of our deck and uh draw an extra card uh, we also run Darkness, uh, which is a one mana instant for one black. That's a fog. It's a black fog. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we have, uh, again, we have a very low creature count. So, you know, we might be a little bit slow to get going at first, uh, you know, drawing into our ninjas and things of that nature. Hopefully our, uh, you know expansive uh, control package will allow us to kind of, you know, stay alive uh, during the early turns of the game until we can start getting our ninjas online. Uh, but darkness, you know, will help us uh, do that as well. You know, if uh, we come up against a deck that's uh, super aggro, you know, we've got, uh, we've got access to this in black to, uh, you know, prevent all combat damage for a turn. And then uh, we also have uh, Anticipate. Another uh, another way for us to kind of manipulate the uh, you know top of our deck, or with this we get to uh, look at our top three, take one of those cards, and then put the rest on the bottom. Uh, we also have a mission briefing uh, that allows us to surveil two, and then basically uh, give a spell in our graveyard flashback for its mana cost. Uh, the exact wording on the card is surveil two, then choose an instant or sorcery card in your graveyard. 
you may cast that card this turn if it would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. So it essentially gives it flashback for its mana cost. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that's uh, I think that's about it for the uh, the instance, uh, more or less counter magic removal flicker and top deck manipulation more or less what we have there in our instance package uh, next up we're going to take a look at the two enchantments that we run in this deck uh, just the two uh, we run a uh, writ of passage which is a uh, one mana blue aura uh, whenever enchanted creature attacks if its power is two or less it's unblockable this turn but uh, most of the time, we're probably going to be using the forecast ability on this. Uh, so for one and a blue, we can reveal it from our hand and target creature with power two or less is unblockable this turn. Uh, you can only forecast during your upkeep and only once each turn. So um, you know you do have a limited window of uh, when you be able to use this. Uh, but, you know, most of the time you're going to be wanting to forecast it instead of actually attaching it to a creature. That way, you know, it stays in your hand and you can guarantee something with uh, power two or less to go unblocked. So you can start, you know, doing your ninjutsu thing or, you know, just triggering Yuriko's ability. And then we have uh, Kindred Discovery uh, is our second enchantment. Uh, it costs five via three and two blue. As it enters the battlefield, we choose a creature type, obviously going to be ninjas here. And then whenever a creature we control of the chosen type enters the battlefield or attacks, draw a card. So uh, just some more card draw for us. All right, and uh, lastly, we're going to uh, take a look at the mana base for the deck. Uh, with it being just a two-color deck, uh, Demir, uh, you know, not an overall complicated mana base, pretty simple. But uh, we're going to take a look first at the, uh, at the cards that produce uh, both of our colors. So we have a Command Tower, obviously. Uh, we have a Demir Aqueduct. Demir Guildgate. Uh, then we have a Sunken Hollow. Tainted Isle. Uh, Watery Grave. And uh, Unclaimed Territory might as well uh, kind of be in this suite of cards. Uh, let's us choose a creature type when it comes in. Uh, we can tap it for a colorless mana, uh, but we can also tap it to add one mana of any color to our mana pool, and then we can spend this mana only to cast a creature spell of the chosen type. So if we uh, use it to cast one of our ninjas, it will tap for both of our colors. Um, but otherwise, it just taps for colorless. Uh, and then as far as the rest of the lands in the deck, uh, we kind of have some nice utility stuff. Uh, we have Ash Barrens, uh, which has basic land cycling for one, so we can pay one, discard it, and search our land for a basic land card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So if we need to uh, fetch out one of our particular colors in our deck, we can use that. Uh, evolving Wilds and Terramorphic Expanse, you know, kind of the uh, the poor man's uh, fetch lands. <laughs> uh, then we have Mirror Pool, uh, which comes into play tapped. Taps for a colorless. Uh, then we can pay two generic and a colorless and tap it and sacrifice it to copy target instant or sorcery spell we control. We can choose new targets for the copy, so we can double up maybe on something that gives a creature unblockable or double up on a removal spell and then we can also pay four generic and a colorless and tap it and sacrifice it put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of target creature you control so you know we can uh, do that to make a copy of one of our ninjas to get some more Yuriko triggers uh, then we have path of ancestry comes into play tapped uh, taps are any color of mana in our commander's color identity, and when that mana is spent to cast a creature spell that shares a creature type with your commander, we get the scry one. So pretty nice right there. Uh, Rogue's Passage, another way for us to be able to guarantee uh, a ninja hitting our opponent so we can get those Yuriko triggers. 
And uh, that's about it for our uh, utility stuff. And then basically uh, the rest of the deck is 13 islands and 12 swamps. So overall pretty, uh, pretty, you know, pretty easy to compile mana base. I mean, the, probably the most expensive card in the mana base is probably going to be Watery Grave. Uh, but, you know, the rest of it is, uh, you know... Not too expensive stuff. Usually, like, the mana base of commander decks is probably what's going to hit your wall at the hardest. But uh, with this particular deck, you know, it's, uh, you know, nothing too complicated. Pretty easy to put together, I'd say. So, that wraps up this deck tech for uh, Yuriko the Tiger's Shadow. Uh, Derek's List. Uh, essentially, Ninja Tribal. Uh, with a pretty heavy uh, emphasis on control. But, uh, you know, we, we want to have that. We want to have that control element so that we can, you know, have our ninjas sit on the board and just continue to just smash our opponent in the face and get those triggers off of Yuriko. So, yeah, uh, looks like a pretty fun deck to play. Uh, I haven't had the, uh, <laughs> the luxury of playing against it yet as it's Derek's deck, uh, but I'm sure I will at some point and, uh, you know, see how it operates. But uh, let us know what you guys think uh, down in the comment section down below. Uh, let us know what you think of Derek's uh, Yuriko, the Tiger Shadow Tribal Ninja Deck Tech. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button. It really does help us out a lot. Uh, obviously, leave us some comments again of what you thought of this deck tech. And if you're not already subscribed to our channel, Tap and Turn Gaming, Go on and crush that subscribe button. We really would appreciate that. Uh, recently, we did uh, we did clear 2,000 subscribers on the channel, so I'd like to take a second and uh, thank everybody for that. Uh, Derek and I really do appreciate it. Um, I know a lot of uh, you know, I mean, we especially appreciate you that uh, you know those of you that stuck around uh, during our uh, extra long hiatus. But uh, thank you all for getting us to where we are now. And uh, thank you for, you know, watching our videos and, you know, leaving the uh, comments and the feedback and stuff like that. Uh, we really do like reading your comments and everything. We basically, you know, read them all. So, uh, you know, leave us some comments and feedback and, and stuff like that. We, you know, we really like to uh, engage with you guys in the comments and everything. But uh, also look for uh, some more polls on the channel. Uh, we're probably going to uh, keep up with the polls to see what decks you guys want to see next. So uh, for the next poll, we might uh, put the other three that were in this uh, previous poll back in and then add a new one. So uh, yeah, we, we want to know what you guys want to see uh, for deck tech. So we're going to keep that whole uh, community post thing going with the polls for you to vote to see what you want to see but yeah that uh that wraps up everything here so again this has been uh jay with tap and turn gaming and this has been uh derek's list for uh yuriko the tiger's shadow hope you all enjoyed watching this video do all of the youtube stuff like comment subscribe all of that and we will catch you later in the next one thanks a lot for watching